What does it mean to be chosen? Some say that the Jewish people are God's chosen people. What does this mean? Why would God choose one group of people over another? Isn't that favoritism? As it turns out, being chosen is a major theme in the scriptures. This idea begins in Genesis 12, where God speaks to Abraham, promising him land, numerous descendants, and blessing. Now, Abraham did not do anything to deserve this. Rather, it was the grace of God. Moreover, God chose Abraham for a purpose, to bless the entire world. As he said, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. The rest of scripture tells of how God blessed Israel, delivering them from slavery in Egypt, bringing them to the land he promised, providing for them, and protecting them. At the same time, the Bible zooms in on Abraham's descendants, drawing attention to specific people in his line. For instance, when David became king over Israel centuries later, God promised that one of his descendants will reign on his throne forever. Nearly 1,000 years later, Yeshua, or Jesus, a descendant of Abraham and David, was born. He lived in the land of Israel and taught the people of Israel. Yeshua even said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. After he died to atone for sin and rose to life again, Yeshua told his disciples to take this good news, the forgiveness of sins and promise of new life to all the nations of the world. At last, God's words to Abraham were coming true. His descendants, and one descendant in particular, were blessing the entire world. So, what about Jewish people after Yeshua came? Are they still the chosen people? Paul, a Jewish follower of Yeshua, addressed this very issue in his letter to the Romans. He wrote that God's choice of Israel is eternal. As God's chosen people, Israel received the scriptures, God's promises, and from them the Messiah Jesus came. Paul pictures those who are saved as an olive tree. The natural branches represent Jewish people, that is, they are the most prepared to receive the eternal life that the Messiah offers. Paul also refers to branches which are broken off, meaning that being part of Israel does not guarantee eternal life. Every person must put their trust in Yeshua to be saved. In this picture, Gentiles who believe in Jesus are like wild branches that are grafted into this tree. Now the church, that is, all people who believe in Jesus, whether Jewish or Gentile, has a role to play in helping Israel accept their Messiah. The phrase Paul uses is to make them jealous. That is, the only way to have a right, eternal relationship with the God of Israel is to believe in Jesus the Messiah. As Israel sees people from all the nations worshiping the God of Israel, they will be drawn to Yeshua as well. When Jesus returns, all Israel will recognize him as the Messiah. Thus, God's blessing comes full circle. First, God blessed Abraham. Then, Abraham's descendants, Yeshua in particular, bless all the nations of the world. In turn, those who trust in Yeshua provoke Israel to jealousy by their intimate relationship with the God of Israel. As Abraham's descendants recognize Yeshua as their Messiah, the blessing of knowing God comes back to them. When Yeshua ushers in his kingdom, Israel will play a role of prominence and spiritual leadership over the nations, mediating that blessing to the world as God always intended. Jews and Gentiles will worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as one.